Okay, now um, in this tutorial number 8.1, um, we're going to introduce the use of uh, epidect for lighting analysis. Um, you should all be familiar with epidect right now and, and, the, and the basic interface. Um, we're going to start this tutorial by uh, introducing lighting analysis, which is um, an important part of the Ecotec simulation tool. Ecotec can be extended by linking it to Radiance, which is a more powerful lighting analysis tool. But in this first tutorial, I'm just going to go quickly through the basics of, of uh, analyzing inter indoor lighting to a room. So let's quickly start by uh, modeling up a room which is um, maybe like 5 by 3 meters wide. So I'm going to pick the zone tool and uh, as we learned before I'm going to start modeling the room. So it should be, I'm just going to set it here to 5 meters long by um, 3 meters wide. A simple rectangular room. Okay. I'm just going uh, to keep it as zone 1 for now. Okay. And as we know, just to uh, focus our screen on the, on the model, I'm going to click on the fit grid to objects. So here's our, our model now, and if we go to the visualize, I'm going to do the same as well. Now to do some lighting analysis, of course, we need to have a um, window to let the light in. So I'm going to select one of the walls, and um, through the draw panel, I'm going to go to the insert child object. This insert child object will give me four options, um, window, wide, panel, and door. Obviously, window is a glazed opening, a window, which is what we're going to use here. But we can also use a void. A void is similar to window, but it doesn't have a material. It's an opening. So it kind of lets air in. So I'm going to use that. Panel is similar to a window, but it has a material other than glass. So if for some reason you want to have an opening that is blocked by wooden panels or anything. And of course, door is self explanatory so let's start with the window. Uh, you see that the first couple of tabs ask for the uh, dimensions, so the width, height, and, and cell height. Um, our wall here is three meters wide, so I'm going to use a window which is, let's say, 1500 mm wide. And of course, you remember that Ecotec uses millimeters as the, as the units, so be careful to enter the wrong, the, the right units. And the height uh, of the window, I'm gonna leave it as 1500 mm as well. So it's a square window. Um, the cell height I'm actually gonna change. Uh, I'm gonna have a cell height of, uh, let's say, 1100 mm. Okay. Now, for the center point of the of the window, as you can see, by default, Ecotec places the, the object in the geometric center of the surface. I honestly recommend that you keep it this way because as we've explored before uh, it's not easy to locate it differently through here. If you want to change the location of the window later you can do it um, manually on the edit tab as well. So I'm just going to click OK and so here's our window. So now we have a room that is 5 by 3 meters wide and it has a 1.5 um, meter window on one of its walls. If you go to visualize, you can see it is the, uh, the box which is our room and then the window at one of the sides. Okay. Now, if we simply turn the uh, the shadows on. Uh, 
and let's not forget to set the zone so I'll just let load the weather file and I'm gonna use um, the device UAE as the location which is where I am so I'm gonna click open as usual it will ask me um, whether or not I need to match the climatic file position and usually it's okay so I'll just click on this okay. now if I change the time of day so that the light comes in you can see that there is a, a patch of light inside the room it's even clear in, in this view see how the, the light comes in through the window natural light where the sun is shining in <coughs> but actually what I'm trying to do is measure the amount of light that is coming um, through this window and, and falling onto the room inside okay. it's not only the light that is coming in but also the effect of the, the, the light bouncing off the walls right. because as we know the, the, yeah, the, the primary light comes in through the window and creates the, the patch that you've seen here but that doesn't mean that the rest of the room is totally dark the light bounces on, on the walls inside and eliminates, eliminates the rest of the room. And this is actually the effect that I want to measure. So to do that, I'm going to use something called um, an analysis grid. Which is, if you go to the right here, is the blue grid icon. Okay. Let me just quickly turn it on. I'm going to click on the display analysis grid button here and the grid comes on. What this is, it's like um, a grid of sensors. That these squares that you see here, we have sensors, and each point, uh, each cell is gonna measure the amount of light falling on. So by using this analysis grid, I can see how light is is um, going in through my room. Of course, you can notice two things. First of all, it's uh, it doesn't exactly match the size of the room. Okay, uh, this is because if it just puts in a default grid uh, size and dimension, but we can fix that. To do that, we need to snap the grid to match the room size. And the easiest way of doing that is by selecting the the floor of the space that I'm studying. And I'm gonna click on the button here that says AutoFit Grid to Objects. The AutoFit Grid to Object menu comes up. It has different options which we will not explore all now. But to make it simple, this is what we need right now. We need to fit the analysis grid within the selected jump. So I'm gonna keep the first selection which is within. And then the second tab says fit grid 2 and it has two options, selected objects or visible objects. Of course I'm going to want to select the, to fit the grid to the selected object, so I'm going to keep it this way. And by default it uses the x, y, x, e, so it's a, because it's a horizontal plane. So I'm not going to change anything here. I just want to point you to the, this, the axial offset. Now when you're, when you want to study the lighting, uh, inside the room, you don't want to study the, the lighting at the floor level. You want to study the lighting at what we call the working height. So in most cases, this height is 600 mm, which is the height of a typical desk scenario. Of course, you can change it if you want to raise it to 800 or, or maybe for some specific reason if you're designing like a, I don't know, a football stadium might want to drop it to uh, zero so you want to see the lighting at the ground level I usually leave it at 600 so, okay, so everything seems okay I'm gonna click on okay now what has happened is that if you can if you've noticed the grid is now aligned with the the, the floor in question okay 
So that's that. Okay. Now actually my model is already ready to do the lighting analysis on. What I need now to do is, is run the, uh, the analysis. And I'm gonna do that in the same tab, the analysis grid. If you go, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find calculations. And the first type of calculation there is the lighting levels. So I'm gonna click on perform calculations. Okay. And it's gonna take me to the lighting analysis wizard. Okay, so our first question is it's asking what I what do I want to calculate? The natural lighting levels or the overall daylighting and electric lighting levels. Since I don't have any electric lights in, in my room at the moment, I'm gonna select the natural lighting levels. But of course I can choose the, the overall and it will do exactly the same. I should use the overall if I have electric lights, which we haven't done yet. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at natural light levels right now. I'm gonna click on next. Where should the light values be calculated? It's asking me whether I the electric calculate the lighting levels at specific points or over the analysis grid. So in, in this scenario again, I'm gonna select the second option, the over the analysis grid. Next, how precise do you want the ray tracing to be? Again, this is something that is very common in Ecotech, and it all depends on mainly the time in hand. If you have long time in hand. Maximize the settings and go all the way to full. But usually, I find medium to high are a fair values. There's another trick to it as well. It all depends on how complex your model is. If you have a very simple model like the one that I'm working with right now, it doesn't really matter. I mean, even the low setting will do the trick. But if you have a complex model with uh, complicated geometry, maybe internal partitions and, and furniture and such. You might want to increase the, the, the sample point, the raise per sample point. So anyway, in, in, in this scenario, I'm just going to keep it on medium for the sake of time. Click next. Okay, now this is very important. The design sky luminance. Um, Ecotect is asking now how what we call what the sky, design sky is like, which is the lux value, average lux value for the sky. If you have this number for your specific location, you might want to enter it. If not, it's very easy to just get Equitech to calculate it through the uh, model latitude. So I click on I'm not sure. And the second option is calculate from model latitude. So it's going to use the latitude for the Y, which is my current location, and uh, calculate the uh, design square from there. So if I click on it, you see that in the Y, there's a very very bright uh, design sky, 11,000 lux. Okay, so I'm gonna click on next. Window cleanliness, clean being one, average being 0.9, and visibility. I keep it at average. So next, what is what aspect is more important? And usually use the increased accuracy. So I'll click next. Okay. Now, as usual, the, the last step of the wizard is a wrap up of all the different settings. Just make sure that all what you've selected is there, and if it's okay, just click on OK. Okay. Now, this was very fast. I've, what happened is that the analysis went through, and uh, it's already showing the results. Okay. Now, it uh, doesn't need a lot of explanation. I mean, it's very obvious that lighting levels just adjacent to the window is, is very high, it's very, it's very bright, and then the further you go, it kind of diminishes. Now, the, this result is showing the daylight analysis, uh, the daylight factor, which is m sometimes misleading and it's not very easy for us architects to uh, read. So, I usually prefer the lux levels. Now, to get the lux levels instead of the aligning factors, you go into the, again, under the analysis grid. Instead of the daylighting factor, I'm going to select the daylighting levels. And as you can see, now we have, instead of the daylighting factor, we have lux levels. So, it's very easy to see that, you know, these yellow areas here are 
very bright, having almost 1,200 plus lux. And then it goes into the red, where you have the uh, 670, and then the um, violet, and then oh, the, the blue. And it's clear that even the deepest part of the of the room gets at least 120 lux. <coughs> okay. Now, this is good for the first prompt, but as you can see, the the grid that we are using is fairly coarse, meaning that the cells are are quite big. To get some decent results, you tend to want to um, increase the, the grid density, have smaller cells. So you do that by again all under the uh, analysis grid settings. You go into the grid management. The grid management is going to show you the um, grid dimensions, start position and grid size and stuff. Please leave all these alone because these have been set by the grid fitting within the space. What we are concerned with are the number of cells. As you can see, by default it starts at 20, 16 and 16. Let's increase those. But what's the logic of increasing them? It all depends on the dimensions. We have a room that is 5 meters by 3 meters. So if we increase the number here to 50, it means we can we will have 50 cells, um, I mean 10 cells per meter. And it, it's always a good practice to keep the cells uh, square. So if we have 50 cells in the 5 meter direction, uh, it makes sense to have 30 cells in the uh, Y direction, so that we have square cells. And then, because we're only doing uh, 2D analysis grid, I'd rather have the, uh, the Z as a 1 instead of 16, save memory. Okay, so if I click on OK now, you'll see that I ended up with uh, a much more dense grid. Now, changing the grid size or dimensions immediately overrides the analysis that I've done. So I need to redo the analysis. So let's redo that quickly. We go to calculations, lighting levels, perform calculations, natural natural light levels. Next, <coughs> over the analysis grid, medium. The design sky has not changed, so I'll keep it as it is. And the clean in a set average. Increased accuracy mode. Everything seems checked. So I'll just click OK. And as you can see, it's taken a bit longer this time. The denser the grid, the, the more coarse, the, the, the more time it takes to analyze. Again, I'm going to change it to daylight levels. And it's very obvious how this time it's, uh, it's more accurate. I'm getting a more dense grid, so the results are. Are, are more accurate. Now there is we're almost done here with the the basic lighting houses. I'm sure this gave you an idea. I'm just quickly before finishing this, I'm gonna show you how to uh, you can click on show contour lines. So it shows you the extent of the uh, the light areas. So here we have a small spot where the lighting levels are very high, and then areas around it and stuff. Um, you can show the values of each, but of course, with such a dense grid, it becomes hard to read. But if you zoom in, you can start reading the values at each point. Anyway, so I hope this is kind of a, a basic introduction of how to do uh, a lighting analysis in Ecotech. And in the next tutorials, we'll, uh, we'll go to more more advanced uh, fighting houses. Thank you.